Hello and welcome to Manu Video Game Maker new beta release. Along with the new Game UI Toolkit, we introduce the Mouse Toolkit. Whether you are building a simple menu, a cookie clicking game, or anything that needs mouse click events, another promised feature is here for you. Also, we have a cozy Discord channel where you can get tips from our team. The link is in the video description, don't forget to join the community. To begin with, we create a new UI container for the mouse cursor. We also add a new UI element. This will represent the mouse cursor. Scale the UI element to your liking and import a cursor icon. This is going to be the default cursor for your game. But before being able to use this, you need to set it as the initial one. Create an animation and set it to start on the launch scene. In the timeline, add the mouse and click on set a new mouse pointer. Set it to the Kusros UI element that you just created. In the game, you can already see the working cursor. In this new update, you can swap the default cursor to a different one. Duplicate the default cursor and set a new material to it. Disable the second cursor and create a new animation. For demonstration purposes, we are going to trigger this animation manually with a press of a key. Add the mouse pointer in the animation and disable it. Add the mouse and set a new mouse pointer. Choose the second cursor. You can set it as a new cursor for any object you like, either a UI element or even a 3D object from the game. Add the second cursor in the timeline and enable it. In the game, we can see the default cursor, and when we press 1, it turns into a hand cursor. With this new update, Manu introduces a new set of mouse events for triggers, mouse click events, and hover events. You can use these events in animations, in the state machine, and in the game flow. A different method to change the appearance of the cursor is by adding a texture with multiple cursor icons and changing the texture offset. In this example, we will work with two cursors. Set the tiling V to 05 and the offset to 50, so we still have the default cursor. We also created a simple menu with a collection of various UI elements that will help us learn the new mouse feature. Let's see how to set the play button. We create a new animation that will change the play button texture and the mouse texture when the mouse hovers over it. We add the play button and the cursor in the timeline. The play button texture contains three images of the button, normal, hover, and click. We set the texture offset V to 033 to display the second image. We set the cursor texture offset V to 0. In the triggers tab, we add a new mouse event. Mouse enters an area. We set this area to the play button. We duplicate the animation to use it when the mouse stops hovering over the play button. We set the play button texture offset back to 0666 and the cursor texture offset back to 05. We change the mouse event in the triggers tab to mouse leave an area. We duplicate this animation once again to create a click event for the play button. For this animation, we don't need the cursor texture. We set the play button texture offset to zero, and we set the transition to no interpolation. We set a second keyframe with a value of 0666. We add the menu container and disable all child elements to make the menu disappear when we click on the play button. 
In the Triggers tab, we set a mouse click event. We set the mouse key to the left key and the target to the play button. To create a toggle button, we can repeat the same process, but we are going to move the button into position X on a click event. We duplicate the play button click animation and we change the click target to the toggle button. Retarget the play button to the toggle button. Add a position X property and set the first keyframe to minus 23 for the initial position and 23 for the final position of the toggle button. To pass this toggle information to anything in our game, select the toggle button and create a Boolean variable. This variable will help us control both the toggle button behavior and use it to trigger other animations. In the toggle button clicked animation, we add a comparison event for the Boolean variable and set it to false. This will allow us to use this animation only when the toggle is off. In the timeline, we set the Boolean variable to true. We duplicate this animation to use it for the toggle off. In the triggers tab, we change the false to true. In the timeline, we set the position X of the toggle button the opposite way to make it return to the original position. We set the Boolean variable to off. With this Boolean value now, we can control any animation we want. For example, this ambient music animation plays in a loop. In the Triggers tab, we add a comparison event for the Boolean variable and set it to continuously true. In the game, the menu appears and we click on the toggle. This will trigger the ambient music to play. We click on the toggle again and mute the music. The menu closes when we click on X. Don't forget to subscribe to Manu channel for future updates. There are more astonishing features to come.